Starlet Wahoo and Rita Waini are among the at least 14 women reportedly killed in Kenya in the first month of this year. Human Rights Watch calls it a national crisis and women in Kenya are demanding action. I'm Annelies Borges and this is The Stream. I'm a Kenyan woman. Of course the constant fear of femicide haunts me. I'm a Kenyan woman. Of course I'm apprehensive about all my interactions with men. I'm a Kenyan woman. Of course I'm terrified to walk alone at night. I'm a Kenyan woman. Of course I'm traumatized by the femicide cases on the news daily. I am a Kenyan woman. Of course, the law does not protect us. I'm a Kenyan woman. Of course my agency and autonomy have been reduced to a debate. I'm a Kenyan woman. Of course I'm tired of femicide. When women are killed in great numbers and girls warn they feel unsafe on the streets, what does it take for a government to listen and take the fight against femicide seriously? Gender-based violence is on the rise in Kenya. At least 500 women have been murdered there since 2016. But many in the country say authorities are not doing enough about it. Among them are some of our guests today. Najeri Megwe, one of the organizers of this past weekend's March Against Femicide and the founder of Usikimie, an organization that works to support victims of gender-based violence. Martha Muatha, the program's coordinator at Feminists in Kenya, a movement working for gender justice. And Stella Bosiri, founder and executive director of the Africa Center for Health Systems and Gender Justice. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the stream today. Before we begin this conversation, here's a short clip of a segment produced by Kenyan investigative media outlet, Africa Uncensored, about one of the women we just mentioned at the top of the show. Take a look. On 3rd January 2024, Scarlett Wahoo walked into Nairobi's South Bay estate accompanied by a man. The next morning, her lifeless body was found in a pool of blood. The prime suspect is the man that was seen accompanying her on CCTV footage, John Matara. Wahoo's tragic death adds to a growing list of Kenyan women who have been killed by men that they trusted. This is femicide, a national scandal that is worse than anyone realizes. Nigeri, is the femicide crisis in Kenya worse than most people realize? Yes, it is. Um, as of yesterday, we had lost 21 women in just this month alone. And I believe that those figures mean that the crisis is bigger than is anticipated, mm -hmm. and those are only reported cases. That means those are only cases that are unknown and have been reported. Most cases go unnoticed and unreported, and that by itself is also a crisis. Mm. Martha, the numbers are indeed staggering. 152 reported gender-based murder last year, um, at least 21, uh, according to Nigeri, in the month of January alone. What is causing this? Definitely. Thank you for your question. I think that um, we first of all have to acknowledge that Kenya is a largely patriarchal society, right? And the misogyny runs rampant. So, um, of course, men or the male population have um, what designated themselves as, you know, like the, the judges, executioners, and, you know, of... of, of um, morality mm. or so to speak right um so women are particularly targeted because women are supposed to be put in their place women are supposed to be acting in a certain way you're supposed to be submissive you're supposed to to, to, to act a certain way you're supposed to dress a certain way you're not supposed to push back and the reason why they're getting so angry right now is because we have we are starting to reclaim our voices back right we are mm. saying that look you cannot um, dictate what I will do with my body. I have my bodily autonomy. I have my agency. I can decide what to do with it, right? Mm. And that is very upsetting for a patriarchal society, a 
a, a, a society that runs rampant with sexism, that runs rampant with misogyny. And so for me, it is like women cannot stop talking. We cannot stop speaking. We cannot stop raising our voices. We need to make sure that we are heard because it is in the pushback that things change. When we marched in 2019, because I remember 2019 was when I had just become like, I was barely three years into my, my feminist journey, right? Feminism journey. And, and then we were just a bunch of young kids who mm. said that, look, women are being killed largely. So can we go and say that we are standing against femicide? This is, the, the, I'm talking about the total shutdown of 2019. Sure, and even we, we are going to go back to 2019 about... in just a moment. Okay. We, we okay, are okay, going okay, to take okay. you yeah, guys yeah. there. But okay. I, I, I just want to ask Stella if she can talk to us um, a little bit about some of these recent cases. We named a few of the women just at the start of the show, but can you tell us a little bit more about who they were and who the perpetrators, um, the suspects are, people that they, they actually knew? Thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, there's an assumption that lots of these, um, the number of women who have been murdered um, and gendered, the gendered, um, targeted murdered, were all either in, 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 in an Airbnb or um, they were trying to, in some funny way, extract money from men, or they have taken money from men. Unfortunately, this is not the case. We've had a 60-year-old woman who was murdered in her home. We have had an intersex woman who was murdered in her village. We've had a student who was murdered, um, and this is the case that we have of Waini, um, who was murdered. We have a vast um, cases. The, the cases are not the same, but mm -hmm. there's a context around these cases. It is intimate partner violence. It is violence perpetrated by individuals who are closely known to this in, uh, women, either romantically or non-romantically, or have close relations to them. And so there's an assumption that there's, there's a narrative that has been put out there, and it's a very wrong narrative, which is even being perpetrated or, or, or propelled rather by our politicians, that these women have been murdered in the context of them, we are, I'm seeking either and the language they've used is prostitution, you know? mm -hmm. either seeking um, relations as con as as concerns um, extracting money from cis men, but that has not been the case. I must also mention that we are not just seeing a murder of cis straight women; we're seeing a murder of lesbian women. Last year we had Sheila, who it was one of the most gruesome murders in the country. Her entire body was dis dis it was complete. I cannot even describe it in 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 in, lang in 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 a language that can be understood. But her body parts were completely um, 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 separated from each other, and she had been stabbed multiple number of times. We also have Erica, a transgender woman, who was murdered, and her body um, dumped in the streets of Nairobi. And, and so, so the the, the cases go on and on, and I, I imagine also that this is still an underreported crisis because I imagine there are many more cases like Najeri uh, mentioned at the stars that actually don't even get registered. Is that right, Najeri? You were mentioning that there are many more women that we yes. don't even hear about because I don't know, the society is organized in such a way, the family perhaps is embarrassed about it. Um, is that a, a, something that you, that you confirm that this crisis is an underreported crisis? Yes, I would actually be very firm in saying that this is a very much under reported crisis um, because femicide is the culmination of years of unchecked uh, gender based violence, mm -hmm. um, violence that has run away. What we are now seeing is the culmination of GBV. So a lot of pe a lot of women, the cases are never reported as they were killed by their husbands. It's just like she was beaten and um, she she died on her way to hospital. So it's never reported or as femicide. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes um, in, in, in communities that bury their dead very fast, as cases like this ones never reach to the place where it is actually reported correctly. Sure. And in minorities- Never investigated at either, I imagine. Uh, yes, uh, and Mark most of the investigations, we had hardly ever find the perpetrator. Right. Um, Martha, oh, maybe I'm going to, of course, Sorry. of course, Stella, you want to weigh in? I want to weigh in from a medical perspective. 
the, one of the areas in which we have had an inadequacy is around how it is that forensic, forensic pathology reports uh, many of the deaths of women, is that lots of the time there is no intentionality around recording this data, recording these deaths in the right way that it should. And so what, we, what happens is that we do not have a national survey or a national um, a centralized database that collects how many women who have been killed. And so what you're seeing as even being shown or what the cases that are coming out, it's because these cases have actually been taken up by citizen journalism. They've recorded these cases, they've shared these cases with mainstream media, but there is a lack of reporting from the medical fraternity, right from Jerry said, right from the place where a woman or a gender diverse person has gone to the facility to seek for care and the continuum of care to be able to ensure that she survives. We do not follow those cases as medics and those who are uh, involved in legal or service delivery to ensure that they do not end up dead. And a lot of the times when they end up dead, we do not put it two and two together. So even the population studies around gender-based violence most of them are not as accurate as they mm -hmm. ought to be. So a lack of data mm -hmm. pretty much everywhere. Martha, uh, I would like to ask something rather difficult from you, if that is okay. I, I, I understand you are a victim of uh, gender-based violence yourself. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about your experience? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, um, so... I was in a relationship that was abusive, but besides that, I was raped in 2021. And when I was raped, I was raped somewhere along Campbell Road, right? And, 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 and I, I think I blacked out because I had been dragged. So it was a girl and her boyfriend who took me to the to, to, to the police station, and I was crying. After I was done crying for like after like three hours of just absolutely breaking down the police had the audacity to tell me like look this has been happening for like this is probably the like what the ninth case that has the same mo and for me it was look it means that there is a serial rapist out there in mm -hmm. Kiambu County, and you people are doing nothing about it, right? Mm -hmm. Even to date, my case has never been settled. So mm -hmm. the thing that when you see me pushing, yesterday I was telling people, when you see me pushing against the fight, like against femicide, is that it could have been me. Again, I, I'm so sorry to, to, to ask you to, to share all this with us, but I think it's very important, as you said, that is that explains the strength of your word as well and why you do what you do today. Najeri, um, actually, Martha was explaining that this is not new, that in 2019 there was a big wave of protests in Kenya as well. Can you, uh, Najeri, tell us how does it compare? How does the situation compare uh, from what was happening in 2019? Has anything changed? Has anything gotten better or worse? Uh, um, hmm. Based on the fact that uh, the femicide match that was total shut down because what we did was total shut down again, um, the cases were had really risen and there were a lot. And so feminists in Kenya and their allies came together and organized that particular match. And now we organized again in 2023. I have to say that the cases have gone up. Um, if you look uh, at the year after the march, the cases were not so bad, but it was the pandemic. So again, mm -hmm. the cases went up. And from then, the cases have steadily arisen. Uh, we are seeing a case that was uh, for Dr. Ivy Wangeshi that happened in 2019. The case, uh, we got a, a court ruling in November of last year. And so I have to say, looking at the numbers themselves, the, the cases keep on rising and the situation isn't any better. You would think we would have had a commission that would have investigated, would have taken number, taken data, known on which ways in which we need to, to do better as a government and as a country, but that hasn't happened. Mm. And I feel like that is particularly the cause of why the numbers keep on rising. I, I want to... Uh, have a look now at um, a shocking video that went viral after the protest this weekend. I won't even describe this to you. Ju just watch it. No, 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 we are going no. to kill you. Yeah. No. I yeah. Yeah. tell you, we are going to kill you. We are going to, we are going to, to kill you. We want as to many as, let me tell you, I cannot take you to pizza and you eat my money. <laughs> Come on. We, 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 are we are going to die. We are going to die. You women are going to die, let me tell you.
I mean, Stella, this is quite shocking. Um, can you explain a little bit the context, what was going on there, and if this rhetoric, like Martha was describing before, is part of the problem in Kenya? Um, there were a number of young women who were protesting um, at that garden, and then um, and they had placards. And so these men attacked these women, verbally abused them, and of course expressed their opinion. This is not new. The commodification of women is not a new thing. Is that a woman's body is at a, a, is, is a price, is a property that needs to be exchanged. And so let me mention that a pizza, maximum cost of a pizza is $3. That for this man, if they buy you a meal of $3, you must be able to sexually give in to them. Essentially, they're saying you do not have, there is no issue around consent. There is no issue around you making your own decision around your body in autonomy. They have access to your body. But this is not just a new, um, uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not a new attitude. Mm -hmm. Gender stereotyping, sexism is deeply entrenched and toxic masculinity within our society. We see it in our political class. We see it within our communities. We see it at an individuals. And so these individuals, what they're doing is they're showing how exactly the society is. Social ecological models will tell you that ways in which to be able to address GBV is to look at the layers, and the layers start with individuals. Socialization of men to believe that they women are to sub uh, the women are to, are to subjugate, mm -hmm. the women are inferior to them, the women owe them, the women serve them is a very wrong notion. Unfortunately, that's a notion that these men have been raised to. And you can see, these are not men in, 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 in who are middle class, you know, or the mm -hmm. upper class. These are men who are in their low social economic status because you can see the uniform they're wearing. They look like um, public transport uh, workers. So these are men who are making at most three or two dollars per day. Mm. But even within that level, it tells you that the oppression of women, and this is the layering of, 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 of the uh, risk factors and the causes of violence. These women who are with under this men, who are forced to be under this men, are at risk of violence. So these men are not saying something new. Mm. They are saying that which is like, happening they, within the they society. They are saying what many men across Kenya actually think, which is which is quite disturbing exactly. and absurd. Um, luckily, not all men Italian. think this way. Um, I want to, I, I, Martha, I will go back to you. I just want to bring in a, a different voice, a different perspective, and share um, a video from the executive director of Amnesty International Kenya on the role men could be playing in this moment in Kenya. Take a look. It is critical that Kenyan men speak out against the rising cases of femicide and gender-based violence because we have to understand that we are not isolated from this phenomenon. Most women, 30% of all Kenyan women by the age of 15 have experienced some form of psychological or physical trauma and violence as a result of their identity. It is estimated that gender-based violence costs the economy something like 39 billion shillings per annum in terms of lost um, labor, earning and uh, health costs. And for this reason, it is critical, once again, that we observe and we protect and we respect the rights that um, are contained and enshrined in the Kenyan Constitution, particularly Article 27 that says all must be free from discrimination, all must be equal. Uh, Martha, I want to bring you in. How important is that men actually engage and, and, and fight alongside you girls in terms of defending your rights? And how do you go about actually making them part of your movement? Um, oh, that's a very great question. Lots of times people forget that our struggles are interconnected, right? That there is a, a, an intersectionality to the struggle that we have, that look, we're in a system where the government might oppress men and then men will come and oppress women, women will oppress children and children will I don't know, go where, because they're babies, right? So it is important that men uh, join or amplify the voices of women because 
it is in us consolidating our voices in the struggle that we are going to change the way the system works. Because I keep telling people, like, look, our problem is not even, we are not fighting men. This is not even a gender war. This is a systemic war. Because it's this system, it is this society that has made it seem like women are dispensable, that women are, can be discarded, that men can also be discarded. You know, in a place where a power is discarding men, men will feel like they can come and discard women, and then women will also feel like they can discard children. This is why even right now, I think it was a story that you were, we were sharing with us and Jerry yesterday of a boy who was beaten at school by, by he, he was beaten 10 days into joining that school he was beaten to death and you see that there is an interconnectedness an intersectionality of this kind of violence mm. so it cannot be done by women alone because once you have made it seem like women can be discarded women can uh, like uh, are you know like the other like pure othering women it is just a matter of time until you the system comes for you. Mm -hmm. It is just a matter of time until the system comes for you. Until it happens to, it. to you. Uh, Najeri, how big of a problem is the government or the lack of attitude on behalf of authorities right now in Kenya in terms of responding to this crisis, acknowledging and responding to the crisis? We... I love we how you smile at that, that question. It's like... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, uh, the reason I smiled is because sometimes I feel like the government just ignores the whole issue. Mm -hmm. uh, based on the statements that the government have given and have previously given, um, we are a country that has fantastic laws, very beautifully written. Um, if you read them, you'll think we are a perfectly working country mm -hmm. that actually cares for the women in the country. But laws are only as good if they can actually work. Mm -hmm. And if there is a goodwill to make sure that the laws work, if there is goodwill from the people who are supposed to protect and serve the people. Now, based on what our female politicians, and I, I will say the female politicians because they have really been speaking and really undermining the work that we, as women activists, as the organizers of the march, uh, myself together with my other colleagues who did this, um, for you to come and say that the march didn't bear fruit or even other the work that we are doing by even victim blaming as a woman politician mm -hmm. and the other ones who are saying they're too busy running their lives for them to care. Wow. Um, it starts telling you the level where the government, if these are the people we have platform to go and take our issues to parliament. Mm. And as a woman, you know, you are not going to escape this. Mm. The fact that we think that our socioeconomic status makes us exempt from the violence that is getting every other woman is, is a very sad state of affairs for me. So as far as I'm concerned, I feel the government has and needs to do a much more robust system of protection. They need to act on this. The fact that the president himself has not said a word in regards to this much, we've heard from the judicial, at least the judiciary, but then again, we also have to admit that uh, our chief justice is a woman and this, this, this is important to her, but this is not just for one person to speak, which in this instance was the minister for gender, who is a woman, but also the president by acknowledging that we do have a crisis and what then do we do as a country when over 10,000 people march on the streets asking you as the executive that we are being killed and we need you to do something and you don't even have a statement to even reassure us that you've had our cry. And mm. I have to beg It to is a that. whole system there that needs uh, building or at least uh, fixing, I guess. Stella, one last word, very briefly, if you may. Where to from here? How do you go about fixing Kenya's national crisis? of femicides? First and foremost, we have to stop centrally, centralizing the conversation around the victims and the survivors of gender-based violence. That's it. Because when we do that, we'll shift our attention to the perpetrators. And then we'll start asking ourselves the different questions within the society. 
So we'll start at the individual level, at the community level, and at the system level, you know, societal level, right? And say, okay, we have laws already in this country. Do we need to reform these laws? I personally am a proponent that we must actually have a legislation or a section, even if it's the Domestic Violence Act or the Sexual Violence Act, that specifically defines femicide as a criminal offense that attracts the highest sentence in the country. And so we must actually stop talking about the victims and the survivors and start talking about the perpetrators. Stop that is where you may engagement. Stop questioning the victims and start talking stop about stop who questioning. did it. Yes. Thank you so, so much, uh, Najeri, Martha, and Stella, for joining us here on the stream for this very important conversation. I'm so sorry we're out of time, but thank you so much for joining us. And thank you all for watching. We would love for you to keep this conversation going online. And, of course, if you have... Other ideas for this show, you can always use the hashtag or the handle AJStream and we'll look into your suggestions and feedback. Take care and I'll see you soon.